The Mega Drive was a revolutionary console. The consoles that followed had a bit less of an impact, while the add-ons for the Mega Drive were especially known for not selling too great. But I have a proposal. A proposal that would have made the Mega CD a lot more interesting, and made it sell a lot better. So, the Mega Drive, released in 1988, it had some of the most insane hardware, at the time, known to man, generally beating the Western Home PCs released at the time. The 16-bit Motorola 68000 not only mopped the floor with the NES's Ricoh 2A03, but also managed to beat the SNES's Ricoh 5A22. It's slightly faster in some operations, while significantly faster in other operations. This is due to its dual 32 and 16-bit design. The DMA unit is significantly faster than the SNES's, that's where the blast processing term comes from. The GPU, while on its own, could handle less colors and lacked background scaling, also known as Mode 7. The fast DMA unit could handle it if the developers manually programmed it to do so. The DMA unit could also write during active display time, allowing for faster scrolling. The DMA also had a faster bandwidth, uh, the ability to palette swap mid-frame, which increased the color count, scale and rotate sprites, raycast and playback full motion videos at a much higher quality than the SNES. It was also capable of rendering polygonal graphics at speeds sometimes comparable to the SuperFX chip. The audio system had its own dedicated CPU, a Zilog Z80, which controlled two sound chips, a Yamaha YM2612 and a Sega PSG. The Z80 is slightly faster than the SNES's audio processor on its own, however, since it has direct access to the 68000's RAM along with its own audio RAM, it's significantly faster. The Yamaha YM2612 has a much wider frequency range than the SNES sound chip, has more channels which support both FM synthesis and PCM sampling, while the PSG provides for additional synthesis channels, while the SNES could only do playback of pre-recorded samples. The SNES does have a higher maximum PCM sampling rate, however due to the Z80 having direct access to the RAM cartridge, it can stream high quality PCM audio at a high bitrate. While the SNES requires the usage of the CPU to transfer data to the sound RAM, thus lowering the overall amount of game data it can process. The secondary audio chip, the PSG, could play PCM samples by using three of its tone gener by using three of its tone samples as a single PCM channel, playing a 44.1 kHz 4-bit or 11.025 kHz 12-bit audio stream. However, it constrained the Z80, unlike the 32 kHz samples on the main sound chip. It is possible to use the 68000 to handle PCM playback on the Yamaha chip, while the Z80 handles the PCM playback on the PSG chip for a total of 2-5 PCM channels, along with 5 FM channels. However, there was also an add-on that we need to take a look at. The Mega CD. The Mega CD add-on hasn't lived the best of a life. Hardware-wise, it's pretty interesting. It had a second Motorola 68000 clock tire, allowing games to use both of them at once. It had way more memory, an audio chip capable of two stereo CD quality channels along with eight extra PCM channels, and a GPU coprocessor capable of full screen FMV support, sprite and tile map scaling and rotation, which was actually superior to the Mode 7 tech used on the SNES's that could only modify the tile map. It also supported 500 megabyte CD ROMs for data and had a special 128 kilobyte cartridge used for storing game data, as there was no way to store game data onto the disc. There was a decent amount of games released for the Mega CD, however, most of them sadly did not make full use of the hardware and they were just FMV games, however, there was one very interesting game that was released which did not require the Mega CD. This is Virtua Racer. Yes, it's running on an unmodified Sega Mega Drive thanks to the enhancement chip. Remember the Super FX chip? Sega had one of their own and it mopped the floor with it. It had a lot more RAM, a much higher bandwidth, 
it could handle 50,000 polygons instead of the Super FX's 20,000. It could flat shade 20,000 polygons instead of a mega 4,000 of the Super FX2, along with 3,000 of them being texture map. It also included two extra PWM audio channels. Why is this important? Well, you see, the 32X was released by Sega as a bolt-on enhancement chip. So that way they can sell one enhancement chip instead of having to bundle it with every game. My idea is pretty simple. Mount the SVP, Sega Virtua processor, into the Mega CD. Let it cooperate with the coprocessor already in the Mega CD, along with the main graphics chip. This, of course, would have added extra program complexity if one wanted to bother with it. But consider what could have been if you did. You would have the following specifications. CPU-wise, you'd have two Motorola 68000s, a Zilog Z80, which, while it was most often just used as a sound CPU, still could do other things to a degree. Audio-wise, you have seven FM channels and one PCM channel on the Mega Drive without special drivers, along with two stereo CD channels and eight PCM channels on the Mega CD, and two PWM channels on the SVP. That's heaps of channels for extremely detailed audio, along with CD quality music. Memory-wise, you have 64 kilobytes of RAM, 64 kilobytes of VRAM, and 8 kilobytes of, of audio RAM on the Mega Drive. The Z80 can freely access the main memory, 32 kilobytes at a time, with it being freely able to use the audio RAM, while the 68000 must request the Z80 bus in order to access it. There were 512 kilobytes of RAM, 256 kilobytes of VRAM, and 64 kilobytes of TCM sample RAM on the Mega CD, and along with 428 kilobytes of RAM on the SVP. This would have added to over 1,000 kilobytes of RAM, also known as over 1 megabyte. Storage-wise, you have 128 kilobytes of save data, along with 500 megabytes of game data. That's heaps of storage for data, along with CD quality audio and CD FMV quality being available to you. Graphics-wise, which is probably the most interesting part of all of them, you have the power of the three chips. The Mega Drive GPU is, well, the main GPU that outputs the video and has the hardware layers along with scrolling and such. The CD GPU has the advanced sprite and tile map scrolling and rotation, ray casting, more colors, and a superior mode 7, while the SVP GPU is dedicated to calculating the polygonal graphics in games such as Virtua Racer. So, what could you expect to exist if such a console existed? Well, take Virtua Racer, expand the total cartridge size to half a gigabyte, add more sound channels, CD quality music, FMV support, and a second damn processor. You could have quite the system. The success of the system could have pushed back the release date of the Sega Saturn, allowing for it to be more fleshed out and have more games on it. However, the Saturn's technical mishaps is something I will not talk about in this video. This is if Sega could have made the Mega CD a lot cooler, However, granted, the Sega CD would have still been really cool if more games actually utilized the expanded storage and audio in a way which wasn't just FMV games, but oh well. I mean, realistically speaking, this idea could be possible, might into some problems down the road, but either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time when I may talk about another console that didn't have the best of a life. Maybe one which needs quite a few more detailed changes, such as not using quads.